This is your chess puzzler, and welcome to the channel. We're now in round five of the Grand Gear Classic, a tournament that has been on for the last few years. It started, in fact, back in 2013, and takes place each year after that. If you know about the Grand Gear, you might just be able to remember who the previous winners were. Okay, let me get you out of your misery, just in case you don't. Vishanand was the first to win it, then Neidich, then Magnus Carlsen in 2015, and in 2017 it was Levon Neronian, who I think is yet to find his form since the recent candidates. In nine, <laughs> yeah, right. In 2016, there was no Granger, and that is why I skipped this year. One person who did, or does considerably well, is Nidish himself. I don't think this year, though. In 2015, he took second place. In 2017, he ended fourth, but with only two points away from top seeder Magnus. What I want to look at today is one of two games, and I can't make my mind on what game to go for. The two games of interest are on table three between Anand and Caruana, and on table five between MVL and Levon Aronian. I think I'm going to cover the Anand Caruana game only because I covered MVL yesterday. But before I kick off with our game, what are the current standings after four rounds? Let me bring them up, and I hope these are large enough to be read. Okie dokie. Fabi, Maxime and Nikita with three points. Magnus and Levon follow with two and a half. And then Matthias and Vishanand with one and a half points. And three GMs with a single point. Don't assume because Vichy has one and a half points, he's not able to win this game today. After all, Vichy has been a five times world champ. So this can sum up pretty much how well he's capable of winning any game. Okay, I have now turned completely round and changed my mind. But don't ask. The game I want to look at is the Maya Carlson game because... I waited and waited until all games progressed well into the mid-phase. And I think the Maya Carlsen game just stands out. Let's see why I wanted to do this game in particular. Maya White got started with d4. And through knight f6. c4 and d6. Do you expect any transposition. Normally this goes right into the Queen's Gambit but we only have to wait a few seconds for a confirmation. After this knight made his way onto the board Carlson responded with d5 and in fact we have another Queen's Gambit appearing which again can transpose into something else. And when Maya decided to go for this move Opening up on G2, we were now looking to the Catalan. Carlsen took his chances with a check, and when the bishop intercepted, Carlsen returned the bishop to E7, a very typical Carlsen move. After bishop G2, Carlsen went for short, and so did Meyer. And now with this knight joining in, when the queen got into C2, we were looking at a close type of game of the Catalan. The idea is to be able to pick up this pawn if black takes on c4. Carlsen came up with c6 and then Maya dispatches his bishop to this spot on f4. Knowing Carlsen, he can come up with basically any move. What he did here was to centralise his knight and then Maya shoots off with h4. The first attempt that resembles some sort of attack. After the other knight came into f6, Maya challenged the knight on e4, and now not wanting to exile his knight to d6, Carlsen simply went for the exchange, and here Maya recaptures 
with the knight. Why not the bishop? I don't know, but it seems slightly better to retake, to retake with this bishop for one reason, and this is why when we see Carlson's follow-up move. Carlson attacked this bishop, and when this bishop retreated, Carlson fires off with f5. Meyer was on top of his game, and this is shown when you see what he came up with. He got his bishop out to attack this knight, and now not wanting to return the knight to f6, Carlson got his queen ready just in case. But this is not so much about how Carlson responded, but how Meyer chose his next few moves. He came up with this very challenging bishop going after the bishop on e7. So what happens if Carlson takes? And why did my go for this move in the first instance? Well, once you remove the bishops, the knight is not yet in trouble, but the situation for black is quite unpleasant. Carlson avoided this situation and got his knight out of h5. And now the game continued with e3. Carlson knows this game inside out. And his follow-up move shows how logical his moves are. Since this guy here on e6 imprisons his own bishop on c8, the only way to get this bishop active is either to push on with e5 or open up the diagonal. And since e5 is not an option right now, Carlson went for b6. After rook c1, the bishop got out into a6, and now Meyer uses a3 just to be able to stop or prevent the bishop from coming after the knight. Carlsen came up with a move he went for before, using his other knight when he was alive, and now we had some force exchanges. First the bishops came off, and now Meyer doesn't want to go for the knight, but gets his own bishop back to e2, just to be able to stop the taking on c4. Since Carlson's plan on c4 didn't work, he returned the bishop to b7. Meyer went for b4 to stop any movement on c5, and now when the rook got into c8, Meyer pushed on with c5, and has everything extremely well covered. His only concern is Carlson's knight on e4, but since he poses no real danger, Meyer is not bothered. Carlsen pushed on with e5 to open up the position, but this move is not risk-free. Meyer traded in, and when the queen recaptured, Meyer must have feared what would have happened if he allowed the knight to remove g3, and if this is allowed to happen, you would have the knight coming off. But with this queen coming into the heart of the white camp, this can only spell disaster. And Carlsen is the absolute master in these types of settings. Maya could have gone for this attack on the queen. And this would have been fun to see. It wasn't to be because Maya gave up his knight to the knight. And when F recaptured, things were getting very intense. And particularly for Maya, he challenged the queen on e5. But Carlsen rejected. And now for this queen repositioning to f5, Maya knew this queen can still slip into h3. He didn't mind and went for a4. And here Carlton himself shoots off with g5. After takes and takes, Maya got his king into g2. And now he expects to get his rook, or even both rooks can find their way onto the board on a good day. Rook c7 prompted the first rook to line up. And when this rook got between the queen and the king, Maya got his c-rook to sit behind his own king. And here Carlsen mounts the pressure. And this is something he does very well. This queen move to f5 forces Maya to go for one move. And this is the only move he has. And if I check it out, he has in fact two moves. But sticking your queen in on e1 will be pointless. So rook f1 it was in the very end. And even here Carlsen tried it. He went for this bishop move, but let's not even go into this variation to take the bishop because it is not going to end 
well for white. The answer here was very simple because Maya went for b5. After b5 was removed, any ideas what Maya came up with in 2, 1 and pulls? He used the backing of his own bishop to attack the queen. And what a move this was. Carlson had no choice but to retreat his big lady. He placed her on f7 and now Maya comes up with the biggest move in today's game. Any ideas for those who dare? Queen to e5. How does Carlsen deal with this queen move to e5? A bit odd to see the world champ going for this bishop move. He moved him out to b7. But just look how fast this game has turned around. From one minute to the other, it was Carlsen who seemed to have taken charge of the game. And now a minute later, he finds himself in full defence. Maya took on b6. And now Carlsen takes on a4. And now Maya goes on to take a7. And this game now is getting very hot. Carlsen here took no chances. He used his bishop to seal the axis to a8. And now Maya comes up with this rook move to force the rooks off. The world champ went for the direct removal of a7. And by getting this guy out of the way, Maya comes up with a tremendous response. He got his bishop into g4, and the idea is to squeeze him in with a check. Carlsen was now running, or standing on thin ice. He knew he was busted, and yet he's hoping for some type of miracle. His position is hopeless, to say the least. He got his king out of the light square, and any potential check. And now we have probably the most crucial point in this game. Do you want to try this one out, just in case? What the heck, let's do it. So here we go, in two, one, and pause. What'd you come up with? If you need a hint, this is it. It all comes down to the pin which white can use to their advantage. Maya missed it, and he played so well throughout the entire game. What he needed was this rook move to h5, and we know the rook on g7 is pinned and could not go after this bishop. If this rook move to h5 was executed, Carlsen would have probably resigned. After the queen would try and return to civilization, this helps nada. Because of this, can you see it? Rook takes h7 check and it's game over. Because when the king recaptures, once his rook comes in with a follow-up check, when the king moves back into g8, it all happens here. Bishop e6. And it's all she wrote. Because not only the big lady falls, but the game is also over. Mai is going to be kicking himself when he realises what he missed. And this is how he went about it. So if we come back, when the king moved into the corner of the board, Maya went for this rook move. And when the queen returned into where the action was, Maya went for this variation. And once the queens and these two rooks came off, there was nothing left to play for. Okay, the rook removed a4, and Carlsen agreed to a draw after this bishop and rook moves. And Carlsen himself can't really believe he escaped this one in one piece. And this is yet another one of them games where you are resurrected from a completely lost position. And again, I can't emphasize this enough. Never give up if you see you're losing because this does not necessarily mean what you see on the board, your rival does. In this case, Carlsen knew he was out and yet he tried it. It worked. And he probably is the luckiest person alive right now because he escaped with murder. Okay, many thanks for watching. But before I go, what do the standings look like? Nikita, Maxime and Fabi stand on top with three and a half points each. Then Carlsen and Aronian with three points. And then Vichy and Matthias with two. And Nidish, Yifan and Maya at the very bottom with one and a half points each. 
Round six is next. And the main attention is on boards one and two. Magnus V. Levon and Nikita is up against MVL. So until then, this was your chess puzzler.